Chapter 27, Preventing Burnout as a Freelance Writer. It's 4 p.m. on a Friday, and you're sprinting through an assignment you've been procrastinating on all week. You've been late to calls, letters are starting to spin on the page in front of you, and all words seem to have lost their meaning. You're crumbling under stress, feel consistently behind schedule, and collapse onto your couch all weekend until Sunday night rolls around and you need to try and catch up on the work you didn't get done the week before. You hang out with your friends less since you're so tired, and you don't have time for your hobbies and the things you care about. If this feels like a constant state of your life rather than a rare circumstance, you, my friend, are burned out. If you're operating from a scarcity mindset, you don't take days off for yourself to rest. You are always on, taking meetings and doing assignments on weekends, and pushing yourself until the pages blur in front of you. You're not doing yourself any favors or your clients' projects by not having boundaries and taking your self-care seriously. When I was a new freelancer, I did this to myself on a weekly basis, and I paid dearly for it. I kept getting into never-ending cycles of burnout until one day I woke up, and my finger joints were so swollen I couldn't type. Ironically, I now only work 15 to 20 hours per week on average, depending on my project workload. And I've automated my system so that I make even more than I did when I was a new freelancer breaking my body for 50 to 60 hour work weeks with no time off. The moral of the story, if you're working all the time and harming your health, you're doing it wrong and your strategy needs to change ASAP. Signs you're burned out. Let's take a quiz. Multiple choice. You may be burned out if, check all that apply. A, you feel a lack of motivation to do freelance or creative work. B, you feel deeply exhausted in a way that goes beyond needing more sleep. C. You feel overwhelmed to the point of hopelessness. D. Depression and anxiety are quicker to take root in your day-to-day. E. All of the above. Burnout can show up differently in all of us, but if you feel like any of the above apply to you, it may be time to take a step back from work and reset and refresh. Let's dive into some strategies to help you recover. Thinking about time differently as a freelancer. When I talk about working smarter, not harder, I'm referring to what we've covered in early chapters when it comes to automating and outsourcing. You're probably a bad proofreader of your own work anyways. Who isn't? So why not hire a proofreader to catch any typos or a researcher who can help you bolster your work? But outsourcing costs money, for sure. So start by just automating as much as you can. But setting up automations takes time. Do you know how much time you'll save by spending the extra time now to automate? Go back and review the automation chapter as a primer. Great systems support you in the long run so that you can earn more and do better work. Follow the 80-20 rule. Do the things that will take up 20% of your time to make your life 80% better. My clients want me to be available on the weekends, though. Do all of your clients require that? If not, why not let go of the clients that want that time from you and set expectations moving forward that you don't work on weekends? Otherwise, if weekend work is necessary, pick two days during the work week that you are unavailable and make all of your clients aware you don't answer emails or do work those days. But what I've found is it's difficult to make exceptions without sustaining breaches in your fortress of rest. It's easier to hold strong on boundaries than to bend around everyone else's. There's always another job. If you don't prioritize your own well-being, no one else will. If you don't rest, you'll get burned out and the quality of your work will suffer. A great adage I heard from a friend was, if you don't pick what day of the week you rest, your body will pick for you. And trust me, your body will make sure you get the rest you need, even if it has to force you to find the time. Don't get to that point. Take care of yourself right now. This is the easiest way in the world to impress clients and to prevent yourself from constantly being in a state of chaos. Tools for Preventing Burnout A book that changed my view on my work-life balance is Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle by Amelia and Emily Nagoski. It helped me realize my workaholism was my version of self-harm, and I had a long way to go to heal. In my pursuit of finding balance, I became a certified yoga instructor in Los Angeles and started teaching classes. I had always been a yoga dilettante, but getting my certification was a challenge for me to take my mind-body health to a new level and teach others how to do the same. I found balance through a whole lot of meditation and restructuring my perspective. There are a lot of tools you can use, both on and off a yoga mat, to learn how to better walk through the chaos of life and be less consumed by it. At the end of the day, we're always out of balance. Think about it. Even the act of walking means constantly shifting your weight from one foot to the other, being constantly out of balance, and then adapting to that in order to move forward. If you don't adapt, you fall and get nowhere. Life is similar. You're constantly having to shift your attention to the next job or the next creative project. 
You've got a million things to do and it can be overwhelming. So take a minute, stop and breathe. Think about the things you're grateful for. Turn to those in your community and in your life and share what's on your mind. Then do whatever helps you sort through your personal chaos. Journal, create action plans, go on a run, or just sit still and let it wash over you and then let it go. We only have so many days on this planet. Remember, no matter how successful you get or how much money you make, you can never buy your time back. The goal here is to approach each day with lightness and a sense of joy and gratitude. We don't have to be so serious. The goal of this book is to teach you systems and strategies so you can spend more time enjoying your life and work and not be so burned out you lose interest in what you used to love. Your time is the most valuable thing you'll ever have in life, so spend it wisely. Mini Retirements and Sabbaticals You don't have to be a professor in order to take a sabbatical, and you don't have to be in your 70s in order to go into a mini retirement. Tim Ferriss's book, The 4-Hour Workweek, provides a different take on how to live life and approach work. This was one of the books that changed my perspective on what's possible, and I recommend checking it out if you haven't already. He also touches on the concept of mini retirements as well. Essentially, a mini retirement or sabbatical is a length of time, usually greater than six months, that you take off to retire and step outside of your day-to-day -day life. During this time period, you live off of some of your savings and or passive income streams, and you focus on doing something you love. You might use your mini retirement to follow an obscure indie band on tour or go off-grid and build a cabin with your own two hands. Or you could just book that trip or spend more time with family and friends right where you are. These breaks can help you recover from burnout, get recommitted to your work, explore a creative passion, or be a time to learn something new. The perspective you get from taking long periods of time off is unmatched. Keep these things in mind when planning a mini retirement or sabbatical. Build up your savings and safety net before you leave. You don't want to get to zero and lose your financial momentum. So make sure you have enough in the bank before you make the leap. You can also travel to countries that are more affordable if you're wanting to save money. Let your clients know of your plans in advance. Reach out to your client list and let them know of your plans. Even if you're not actively working with a client, it may be good to give them a heads up if they want to squeeze in a project with you before you leave. Put up a vacation responder on your email address and post an update on your website or blog. That way, potential clients can know when you'll be back and when they can resume working with you. Timing matters. It's probably not wise to plan a year-long backpacking trip when you're just getting started as a freelancer. Instead, try and time your mini-retirement for a place in your life where you don't mind losing some momentum. With that said, if you're in the depths of burnout, the timing for a mini-retirement might be perfect right now. Start with a month. Does the concept of taking a long time off freak you out? For fellow workaholics, I understand. If you need to, dip your toes in. Start with taking a weekend off, then a week, then a month. See how you feel after that time off, and if you're still burned out or longing for more time to yourself, then pull the trigger if all of the details make sense. Many retirements can make sense in a number of different situations. If you're wanting to have a child and start a family, move to a different country, see the world, or spend time with loved ones, this is a great benefit you can give to yourself as your own boss. Bouncing back from burnout. When bouncing back from burnout, give yourself the time and space to complete the recovery process. Just like we need to take sick days when we're not physically well enough to work, we also have to take mental health days when we're not mentally well enough to work. To deal with burnout, first try to completely disconnect. If you can, take some time to reflect and journal about why you got burned out. What commitments aren't serving you? Are you putting too much pressure on yourself? How can you ask others for help? Do you need to hire help? Do you need to diversify your schedule or income sources? Some people have a hard time asking for help. I've heard people describe it as giving up, but anyone that says that is wrong. To ask for help is refusing to give up. Burnout is a symptom of a greater problem. By identifying the source of discord, we can realign our path and create a better work environment for ourselves moving forward. Self-care isn't just about bubble baths and face masks. It's about identifying your needs as a human and making sure your working environment, both in your creative and freelance work, serves those needs. Quick tip, timing your freelance work to your energy levels. If you're someone who gets periods, chances are your energy takes a nosedive during a certain time every month. While most without ovaries have a 24-hour cycle of energy, people with ovaries tend to have a 28-day cycle, and with that comes a variance in energy each week. The secret here? Time your meetings and your work to your 28-day cycle. 
Maximize meetings during the phase of your cycle when you have the most energy and spend more time resting, reflecting, and planning when you have less energy. As a freelancer, you have the freedom to make your own schedule, so work with your body, not against it. Habits to help you heal. Burnout is not something you can just flip a switch and recover from. It can sometimes take years to unwind the effects of chronic stress and anxiety from your body. And this is especially true if you've been stuck in a traumatic situation and your nervous system has become accustomed to fight or flight mode. Here are my essentials when it comes to burnout recovery. Good daily habits. A strict daily routine that includes a 15-minute walk first thing in the morning with no sunglasses to soak in the sun. No coffee. I gave up coffee and replaced it with matcha oat milk lattes that I make at home. This helped me reduce anxiety and lower my cortisol levels and calm my nervous system, while still getting the benefits of a healthier caffeine source. Active relaxation and rest. I spend time on hobbies that promote mindfulness, meditation, journaling, and listening to ASMR sound healing. Getting a sweat in. Working out five days a week and getting a minimum of 10,000 steps per day changed my life and my stress response. I try and do cardio twice a week and strength training three times a week every week. You don't need any equipment. There are plenty of free bodyweight workouts you can do at home. Confiding in friends and family. Freelancing can be lonely, so make sure you're still leaning on your support system of family and friends to get through tough times. Getting to the root cause of stress, overwork, and anxiety. This book is here to help you deal with overwork so that you can work less and be more effective as a freelancer. However, I've found that sometimes... De-stressing requires rewiring a perspective or approach. Even something simple like a daily gratitude practice can help immensely here. There is no magic pill to solve burnout. It takes daily mindfulness to keep unhealthy habits and stress from overtaking your life. Amy's Field Notes Burnout takes both a mental and physical toll. Every loud noise made me jump. My body felt jittery even when I didn't drink very much caffeine. My palms sweat for no reason. These were all symptoms of nervous system dysregulation caused by chronic stress and burnout. I thought I'd be able to solve my burnout with a few trips to the spa and some extra days off. Nope. If it's taken you years to become burned out, it may take you years to unwind the deep effects of chronic stress on your body. To this day, I'm still clearing out the lasting effects of stress from my body. As I write this, I've been on several weeks of heat and cold therapy, going from hot tub to sauna to cold shower, and staying consistent with my workout routines. Don't overlook the power of the mind-body connection. When I'm feeling residual stress creep up, I take a break to meditate, do some yoga, and journal. Breathing exercises are your best friend and my go-to. I've never regretted a single minute or dollar I've spent on self-care. None of this, gestures at everything, matters if you're not healthy, both mentally and physically. Reframe your priorities and put your well-being at the top of your list. Only then will you be able to reach your true potential in life. I create these voiceovers using Wondercraft AI, a text-to-speech tool that speaks in your voice so you can create more podcasts, audiobooks, and voiceovers, all by just dropping in some text. Use my code SUDO50, S-U-T-O-5-0, or the link in the description below to get 50% off your Wondercraft AI subscription. I get a small commission if you use my code, so thanks for your support. Sending creativity and good writing vibes your way. Amy.